Hey guys, today I'm gonna talk about something that has happened to another YouTuber. Uh, before this came out, I didn't watch his channel, but his channel is very good. It's just gameplay. Like he says in his most recent video, he has never once said something bad about Wizards of the Coast. I call Wizards of the Coast all the time, and they have yet to ban me. Now that could be for other reasons that I will go into later. But they took the guy's account away, changed his name from MTG AIDS to MTG Rainbow. Like, I'm not kidding here. They took his Magic Online account, suspended it, or terminated it for a weekend. And then on Monday, they gave him a new account. And they gave him a new name. That would be like, they, hey, MTG Lion, we don't like lions because they're too aggressive, so we would like you to be MTG Pigeon. I would be like, I'm going to sue the blank out of you. And that is ridiculous. So there's many ways to look at this. The first way is AIDS has many re meanings. If you go to a bookstore, AIDS, you will be able to find AIDS. Study guide AIDS. So AIDS obviously is a disease, but it also could be me it also could mean aiding someone in learning magic. And this is what the guy's channel was. So they changed his name to Magic Rainbows. <laughs> and that's just so strange to me that they got offended by the name MTG AIDS when in fact they're called Wizards of the Coast. When I think of Wizards, I don't think of really friendly Wizards or even Harry Potter. In America, we have the KKK and Grand Wizards. There's actually a card from Legends called Invoke Prejudice and it is extremely extremely offensive they printed the card by the way it was the i think the artwork was created by a known white supremacist and they're okay with that they're okay with it they printed the card the card is actually on a reserve list so it's been spiking up in price and if you don't know what the card is please google it and you're gonna see something that you know i'm offended by and but i've accepted it to be part of magic so part of the video is really a discussion on who's in and who's out and many of the other youtubers they don't know this but you have to if you don't pick a side you're you are out so if you don't pick rainbows you are out and the crazy part about it is the people who are in actually do a lot of harm to the game. And let, let me talk about why that is so. Because when you are talk about including everyone and everyone's welcome here. Oh, by the way, the majority of your demographic is not welcome. Then you have a marketing issue. And that is going to eventually hit your sales, if not already. The marketing issue is the people you're marketing towards, women, uh, minorities, they don't want to play your game. Point blank. They don't want to play your game. It is a card game. So ask the cheerleader at your high school, ask the cheerleader at college, ask, the, ask your boss. If your boss is a woman, ask her, hey, do you want to play Magic Gathering with me? Uh, how about we come to this local game store? It's kind of shady and it's really smelly, but you want to come and play with me at f and or pre-release, you know, from midnight until 5 in the morning. Think about pre-release, the one of the most casual and friendly events that Magic hosts, and if not the most popular event. You're expecting someone to go there from 10 or 11 a.m. until 5 a.m. and play Magic. I don't know very many females who want to do this i don't know very many human beings who want to do this except 
for certain nerds because they're used to staying up late and doing stuff like that. So my, my point is very simple. You're either against Wizard of the Coast. If you st stick your nose out or if you stay out of it and you bury your head in the sand, eventually it'll come for you. So you have two options. You can either grovel, beg for money, beg for that money, for that dollar, or get a job. Get a job and not be supported by Wizard of the Coast. Not be at the mercy of Wizard of the Coast. Imagine if your entire income, which many content creators and Magic Pros, is dependent on Wizard of the Coast. Would you offend them? Absolutely not. At that point, they are, quote, your employer, although you don't get insurance. As of the recording of this video, Wed's uh, went to the hospital for, I, I'll talk a little bit more about that. It's an interesting topic, but he doesn't have insurance. You got to get insurance. I don't like, you have to have insurance if you are an American because the hospital bills are insane. Wizard of the Coast does not offer judges insurance. They don't offer liability. They don't, legally, this is insane what they're, they've gotten away with. They have pretty much, quote, employed Christine Sprankles to do cosplaying, but if she injures herself or somebody stalks her or something bad happens to her, no liability on Wizard of Coast. But she's pretty much an employee. The same with judges. You've seen what they did to judges. And the same with the content creators. I, I think, and the pro magic players, they're living on, many of them are living on very baseline salaries like baseline salaries and they don't have insurance they don't have 401k and they never can make a they're not learning a skill so if you're an engineer the difference between pay of an entry-level engineer and a 10-year engineer that's that's value so even if you were making medium middle of the road income eventually once you hit five or ten years you can get another job if you want not true of content creators I don't know. It, it's just disgusting to me uh, from a liability and from a legal perspective. They put all the burden. I will get into Wedge a little later, but I have to frame it correctly because I cannot come off as me attacking him uh, because I don't want to do that. And I think it's very unfair. I think it is the duty of Wizard of the Coast to provide pro Magic players, if that's their lifestyle, and content creators, cosplayers, if they work and represent the company, essentially anyone on your website. If you, they, you have a picture of them on your website, my God, you should, you should give them insurance, right? Like I see so many Kickstarters and Patreons, and the reason we have all of this is because nobody's employed by Wizards of the Coast. They just abuse them. They just abuse judges. The judges have to pay, or I guess the store owner has to pay for the judge to get a background check, which the coach is not going to pay. They're not going to pay $25. They're not going to pay insurance on Wedge or Tolarian or any commander cast. Like, it's a tough life, and they can just take away your account like this. If you have any doubts of Magic Arena, let me warn you this. You can spend thousands of dollars on a gacha game, I would never do it for Magic Arena. I would not spend a cent because they would take away my account. They would absolutely take away my account. I sold out of Magic Online because they're going to take away because I was afraid they would take away my account. So all I have is like bulk stuff that like was under, like I couldn't sell the bulk. But they literally took this guy's name and renamed him Magic Rainbows. Do you think that your Magic Online account is safe? Do you think your Magic Arena account is safe? For whatever reason, they haven't banned me. I have done, and I've spoken out against them many times, but they haven't cha changed my name. They haven't banned me. They haven't even taken away my Magic account. And I'm not sure why that is, except I could put them in litigation. And they have very fancy lawyers. I actually know the lawyer. I know his name. I have his phone number. We've talked on the uh, cell phone before. And he invited me to dinner one time. I did not go because I thought it was a trap. I thought Wizard Coast was trying to trap me because I was like, oh, you know, I've said some bad stuff about Wizard Coast. I don't think uh, this guy's in it to help me. But nice guy. 
he makes eight hundred to a thousand dollars an hour. That's what Wizard Coast pays him. It's not internal. He is an outsourced lawyer in Houston from a big law firm. If we ever got into a legal sh- struggle, I would a, I would sue them. B, I would counter sue them if under other claims, and C, I would represent myself. Like you might pick, oh, that's so silly, blah blah blah. I will represent represent myself with help of my friends from law school. I, w- I did go to a top law school, and most of my friends are lawyers, 95% of them. Wow, they're just paying this guy and his associates. So it's not the, uh, his, so I've worked with this guy called um, Mintz Levins in New York. For They're very good for startups. It's not his, the partner's $800 I'm really worried about. It's the fact that there's two associates on every phone call, and they charge $400 a piece. So I'm really paying $1,600. The same goes with their legal firm. This is a very big law firm, so they operate the same way with billable hours. So the associates, the trainees are the ones doing the work, but you need a big name. So they're probably going to pay $2,000 an hour to litigate this, and I just pay nothing. And litigation can get up to seven figures real fast when you're paying $2,000 an hour for a partner and two associates. I don't know. Anyway, bye guys.